All right, I'm back, and this paper is still a little damp here, but especially in the front. But I think I can get started with some of the grassy areas. Uh, you, you know, again, I've got my own way of of what I, you know, doing what I want to do with the painting. I don't necessarily stay right with that reference photograph once I get the painting to the stage. I kind of have my own idea of what, how I want things to go. But uh, looking at the at the photo one more time, uh, for example, the roadway is quite light. But I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of of uh, darkening that roadway to help define sort of what I call the lay of the land. And this is just kind of defining where is the roadway, where are the grassy areas. And I'm not, I'm not concerned at this point too much about copying this exactly. I want to use it as a guide, of course, but... So I usually get a, I usually get a big round brush for this. And I want to start out with my grassy area being a little bit blue looking in the distance and then get a little more yellow as I come towards the building. So I'm just going to start kind of back in here. So I just, I just usually call this the lay of the land. Again, the, I'm not really so sure if the color matters that much. It's a little bit more of a blue there, with a little yellow in it. And I'm going to kind of do that again right here. And then now, in this part of it, I want to get a little bit yellower. So as I come up towards these buildings, there's the base of that building right there. And this roadway is kind of right there. Kind of right in there somewhere. Okay. Now, by my eye in this photograph, and I think I kind of want to do this, there's a little bit of a burnt sienna thing going on kind of right here. Again, I'm kind of trying to watch where the curb is on that road. And then I think I see what looks like a little, maybe a little purple. So maybe right in here, a little kind of a purpley thing going on. I'm kind of trying to mix the colors up a little bit so it's just not all the same thing all the way across there. Hopefully I'm not, uh, this is another thing I'm kind of guilty of. I'll, I'll get rolling on a per certain thing I'm working on and I, all of a sudden I'll, I'll realize that, hey, wait a minute, that's not where the base of the building was. <laughs> so hopefully I'm not doing that here, but okay, then maybe come back with a little yellow. Again, trying to sort of kind of see where I indicated where the road is. Kind of right in there. And then back in here, this is kind of a bluish, greeny something or other back in here. This doesn't matter so much because uh, this will actually be very much in shade later on. So I'm just kind of indicating that there's stuff back in there. So that's good enough for now. Okay, uh, let, me, let me stretch my paper a little bit more. This part of the paper is still slightly damp, but I think we can get by with working on our roadway a little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead and make that roadway. This will make everybody cringe here, but I'm going to go ahead and make that, that roadway a little bit, or actually probably fairly dark. And the color is not that important. I'll probably wind up throwing colors in it. So I need to define my curve. It's kind of right there. Lay of the land. It, it defines where the grassy areas, where, you know, where are the curves, where is this road going? It's kind of like that. OK. 
Okay, so I need to come across here. Just any old color, really. So there's this island is out here. I want to try to preserve that. If I can. Again, trying to leave a little bit of a line there for where the curve is along the road. Okay, and before that can dry on me too much, I want to throw some color in there. And maybe some burnt sienna, a little bit of that, just in that part we've put on so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a larger flat brush because we've gotten out into a pretty large area of road here. Just throw a few colors in this. Still want to be quite dark. No particular color, but... And then our roadway kind of comes along here and then is is actually kind of sweeping across this island that's out here and where that island ends exactly I can't see very well there but it's something like that really dark here this this wash but uh, later on again with this contrast switching I mentioned earlier that will actually wind up looking a little bit lighter than that <clears throat> Not real concerned about color. Just want to get that dark shape of that roadway. And it's a big wash. Could have almost gone to the two inch on this one, but we'll just kind of stay with this one, I guess. The idea, I guess, is to get the wash on uh, and be, have the opportunity, if you can before the wash dries to throw some other color in there. Just any old thing. paper really wet to give yourself the opportunity to throw color in this so you don't just have a big old flat wash there. Okay, now, whoops, I pulled way too much yellow out on the palette. Okay. So I just want to again the same as I've been as I did before. I just want to just just throw some crazy color in here out in this roadway. Just anything I can find. Some bird sienna. Maybe some more here. A little bit of red. Who knows how that'll all walk, you know how that'll wind up, but just for now, I just want stuff thrown in there like that. Okay, now I think, we'll see how this works out. Whoops, there went my spray bottle. I think we can work on our first tree wash as well before having to turn the camera off here. We'll see if I get by with that in the interest of saving a little time. Go ahead and do a little paper stretch in here. And yes, I mean, you can say to yourself, oh, you know, the, the, the road's too dark, this is too this, this is too that. You can do that, but it's really not, that really doesn't make any difference. It's been my experience anyway. You just uh, kind of go with it, with what you think you should do. Most of the time it works out okay in the long run. Now, when I do the first wash of trees, any old color that I've got down here uh, on the palette, even the dreaded mud is okay. Just any old thing. We're trying to get 
just an indication of trees here. Again, trying to vary the color. Kind of move the brush around like that. Trying to sort of indicate that those are trees. A bit of yellow maybe in there mixed in. Now I want to try here to save my stop sign. I'm not sure how I'll paint that eventually, but not the best stop sign in the world, but that's okay. <clears throat> None of this really matters yet. You just, all you're trying to do is just say tree with this. And background trees. Uh, later on, um, we'll put some other washes over that that will push some of that back. Even a little bit of this purpley reddy stuff in here. The other thing I do is I'll, I'll get something defined and then I'll get busy on something else and paint it right out again. That's just kind of me. Okay, now let's see. Let's have a look here. These trees here, they come pretty much right down into here. And then over here on this side, the trees don't go down that far. So I'm just going to bring them down kind of maybe here. Just kind of an old muddy buried mess there. Now, what I like to do when I'm doing the first tree washes is get a mix of French blue and burnt sienna and just drop some darks in, in a few places. And while that paper is still wet, let them kind of spread around in there naturally. I have no idea what will happen with that. It may be a, you know, a bust, but while that's wet and that, and the paint can spread on its own, just kind of throw some of those in there. <clears throat> See what happens. All right, then over here, same thing again. Maybe since those trees are kind of high up there, let's see if I can get a little bit of yellow. Let me get a little bit of yellow in the top part of this. Again, I want to come back and, and pop that roof out, use this wash to frame that roof. You can see that kind of running down in there, but most of the time that doesn't hurt anything. Same thing where this really, the color of this is not that, not that important. Now the trees come clear up into the top of the paper here. Now, I'm not going to try to save that phone pole. I'll just make that a dark phone pole later. I will try to paint around that light. I'll also probably forget that as well <laughs> later on. Okay, maybe a little bit of blue right in here. I don't know. Kind of maybe a crazy green kind of back in here. Well, the lamp, the light fixture is surviving so far. I haven't painted it out yet. Don't give it very good odds though, I must say. <laughs> okay, and probably at this stage I want to start painting around these signs just to remind me that they're there. Something like that. Now let's see, here, here. There's a roof right there, but that roof is dark, so I don't really need to worry about that. I can just go ahead and try to paint around those signs for now. Got one here. Again, this little part of the shed that comes out here is also dark. Red in there. 
I don't know. See what happens with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and just, I'm just gonna paint over all that. Paint around that sign. Just paint up that whole thing. Okay, uh, I should have come up in this, in that first wash I did above the, the roof and thrown some darks in there. I don't think that'll work for me anymore. That's probably too dry now. That's okay. All right, there we go. Now, we'll need to let everything dry. It is a disaster, I will admit, up to this point. We'll have to just have to see how it all shakes out. I will need to let that wash dry real well now before we go any further with it. Stretch the paper one more time. There we go. All right, I'll turn the camera off and we'll let that paint dry for a while. 